welcome to my channel plant based storm i'm stormy and today i wanted to do a video where i am going to prep starches plus the entire week of meals so it's going to be like what i eat in a day but what i eat in a week so let's get started and see how it goes because there's going to be a lot of video ahead <laughs> shredding up some red cabbage i'm going to put in a zip lock bag and this is going to be eaten with my breakfast each morning i'm going to steam it so that is typically how i get in my veggies in the morning and here i'm going to do a half cup of oatmeal and one cup of water and heat this up in the microwave with a pinch of salt and then i'm going to go ahead and prepare individual Ziploc bags each with a half a cup of oatmeal and I will end up throwing in some blueberries and this will end up being the only time that I show breakfast because it's going to be the same thing each day All of these will end up going into a Ziploc bag and being frozen and can be pulled out each morning individually. And I can eat them here or take them on the go with me so it makes it highly convenient and all I have to do is add water. And I usually cut up an entire banana and add to my oatmeal along with some strawberries. And that's what my steamed cabbage looks like and I'll just toss on a little bit of salt and eat this before I have my oatmeal and it is a great way to get a 50-50 plate in and it's not something too overwhelming in the morning. And this is just my weekly bean prep. I will add a link above um, for you to click on my prep starches with me video to see how I make my beans. It has the full recipe in that video but I usually do a crock pot full of beans each week so as usual i'm going to start this prep off with beans and potatoes i obviously put the beans in the clip earlier next i'm doing potatoes in the instapot so i froze the video here to say that you do not have to prepare your potatoes in an instapot you can do it in a steamer on the stove and just bring it to a high boil and let them steam for 20 minutes and it will come out just like you put them in the instapot just one of my staple starch preps. You can see that these onions are really, really gigantic. So I'm just going to cut up three where I'm showing in my meal prep, it says that I'm going to need three and a half, but since they're so big, I'm just gonna cut three. And if I need more, then I can cut up some later. I just wanted to say that this is our first time trying Beyond Burger. Um, I have been trying to lose weight since November 17th, 2019. And so it's Father's Day and that's actually 217 days in between. And this is the first time that I have done a meal like this. So that's literally 0.5% of my meal intake. So just keep that in mind if you decide to do something like this 
Um, just make sure that it's sparingly if you're trying to lose weight. So this may seem like an odd thing, but I wanted to put this in here to say that if you end up not being hungry one day, to follow and listen to your hunger because that is something that I have done along this weight loss journey. Whenever I'm not hungry, I simply don't eat and I guess that lunch was so rich that I was just truly full so I did not have dinner that night. So I started to prepare my lunch for work that day, but I ended up staying home with my kiddo. So here I am just heating it up at home and getting it ready to eat for lunch. So I've added some tomatoes and I'm adding a fresh squeeze of lime. And these are gonna be similar to my um, hash brown. Uh, nachos except that it's just going to be with the steamed potatoes which is really delicious too and I topped it off with some mango. Then for dinner tonight we are going to do Texas hash and I'm not going to go through the entire recipe. I'm going to add a link in the video because I have a video that shows how to complete this recipe. So yeah this was a really delicious dinner. For the non-starchy vegetables, we're just gonna use um, some squash from the garden. This is center cut squash and a zucchini squash. What's really cool is I think that they cross-pollinated with my butternut. So I'm just gonna saute this and we're gonna have such a delicious, quick and easy meal. little guy today so I have not had to pack my lunch for work yet rocking the mom bun they end up having a leftover Texas hash and I'm gonna figure out something else to go with it probably some broccoli or something in the microwave so let's get it put together and see what we come up with so this is really truly how I do a lot of my meals I just went into my freezer and found these um, they're called cool cauliflower they're just different colored cauliflower I'm gonna eat this and I keep like a big bag of frozen broccoli florets so I'm gonna put these into a bowl with a little bit of water heat them up in the microwave and I'll show you the finished product and I really like putting this on here I like to add a little garlic salt just for some extra flavor. Just really like the way it tastes on broccoli and a lot of other non-starchy vegetables. It's one of my favorite seasonings. And you can see all of the pretty cauliflower. Something fun to eat and put on your plate. Then I have some delicious cantaloupe, which my little guy loves this too. Okay, more broccoli. Okay, so I'm getting ready for dinner tonight. It is a recipe that I've adapted from a blog called Faithful 
plateful. I'm gonna link her recipe below in the description box, but like I said, this is an adapted version and uh, it's one of our absolute favorite dinners. It's so comforting, so delicious, and I can't wait to show it to you. So I have two different types of sweet potatoes here. The orange one is just your regular standard sweet potato, and the other one is the Japanese sweet potato. It has the purple skin. So I like to change it up by adding in that potato, um, and it gives some extra visual interest. We have the oven set at 425 degrees, and we're gonna go ahead and add in the spices so we can start getting this ready. So let's get started. We're gonna have two teaspoons of chili powder. A half a teaspoon of salt. one teaspoon of garlic powder. The next thing I'm gonna add are the onion, and I'm just gonna like eyeball this, but it is about one onion chopped. So these are from the onions that we cut up the other day. And then we're going to add about three cups of the black beans that we prepared the other day as well, on Sunday for our meal prep day. Two, three. This recipe makes a lot. You can actually freeze a good portion of this recipe, which is what she recommends on the blog. And I'm gonna get dinner out of this and probably be able to get a couple more lunches out of it. So that is something that's really nice about this recipe because it's basically a whole food convenience food. So that is pretty awesome. Now we're gonna get ready to add in the rest of the peppers that we cut up the other day. And then the next thing I'm gonna add is an entire lime to this. I'll probably actually end up adding in another lime because it gives it a really good flavor and yeah, I decided to go ahead and do that. Next, we're gonna get this on a baking sheet. This is gonna roast for about 20 minutes like this. So after about 10 minutes, I'm gonna open the oven up and give it a stir. And then we're gonna make a guacamole. Two avocados, a lemon, the red onion and a few tomatoes. Use my avocado masher and then one jalapeno. Half of a lemon. And then you can salt and pepper this to taste. I'm just gonna leave it as is and let us do that on our own. And we're just gonna give these a stir. I actually think that I uh, was supposed to add the black beans in after the fact, but I think it's gonna be totally fine. You can see how much this recipe actually makes. It's huge, um, but it's also a really inexpensive recipe. This is one amazing 
amazing recipe. I think that even people that don't eat plant-based would actually love and truly appreciate. I really highly recommend this and I highly recommend going and checking out Faithful Playful. Like I said, I'll put a link below. These are the burritos or tacos that I was able to freeze from this entire meal. That's 10 total in two different bags. So it's pretty handy to have that whenever you just need something quick to go to. So I'm packing up a lunch for work and I'm just going to do the sweet potato and black bean tacos. Instead of using a tortilla, I'm putting it on a lettuce wrap and bringing the guacamole as well as some watermelon for a snack and I'm bringing a potato and my snacking beans. And here it is prepared at work and it was super delicious and easy to put together. Hey y'all, so it's Wednesday and it's after work, so it's dinner time. I thought that I would do some simple spring rolls. It's just me and my kiddo tonight. And I'm going to make a peanut dipping sauce out of the PB2, so let's get going. So you stir this up. And a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. I'm actually gonna sprinkle in a little bit more of the PB too. noodles you want to rinse them with cool water to stop the cooking so in order to get them made you want to wet the rice paper really well in some water and then I'm just gonna lay the lettuce down and add all of the other ingredients the carrot and the noodles and I'm going to put a little bit of coconut aminos on it. I usually put a cucumber in here, but since I didn't have one, that's why I use the carrot and then some red onion. And then you just want to tuck the sides in and roll it up and allow it to seal for a couple minutes. And then we will cut them in half at the end. So for today's lunch, it was just a simple potato with broccoli and cantaloupe along with the snacking beans and some ketchup. For the pizza, we like to use a red sauce, so my husband was getting this ready for us and it's just four red bell peppers that are roasted in the oven and it's just roasted until the skin starts to get bubbly and some burnt black spots on it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to rotate the peppers so that they can cook and blister evenly. Forgot to mention that there is a whole head of garlic in that piece of foil that's standing up. It gets roasted right along with the red peppers. And once you pull it out of the oven and they have roasted really well, you want to put them in a paper bag. This is actually a double lined uh, paper bag, so one inside of the other. And this just helps for the skin to peel off and it almost makes it where it just falls off of the pepper. And it's going to sit in this bag for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you can go ahead and remove them from the bag and begin to peel the peppers. And you can see how easy they actually peel from steaming in that paper bag. The skin just comes right off. And then you want to scrape the seeds out. 
and then you want to add them to your blender and continue to do that for each one of the peppers until you have them ready to blend. Once your peppers are all in the blender and ready to go, go ahead and add in the garlic. Then go ahead and add in about a tablespoon of your favorite Italian seasoning. This is ours. It's Rebel Roots, not sponsored, just something that we really like using. Next, you'll add in about a teaspoon of black pepper. And then you're gonna blend until it is a smooth consistency and it is ready to go. So it's day five and we are doing pizzas tonight. This is just a simple um, whole grain crust that I buy. I'm a local grocery store here and um, it is just a really thin crust, which is what we like. And then of course, this is the roasted red pepper we're gonna use. Super simple, super easy. Whenever you need something quick. And then I'll just pair this with a salad and I will probably actually eat this whole pizza because it is so good, but there's not a ton of things on our pizza, so um, I can eat the whole thing and not feel like I have just overstuffed myself. And the hubs and the, the kiddo will have their own pizzas, of course. My kiddo's is gonna be a lot smaller than this one. This is salt-free for my husband. And then we like to do pineapple and jalapeno and red onion. And these are baby bellas that we like to add. A lot of times we do a fresh tomato, but today we're gonna use these uh, dehydrated or sun-dried tomatoes um, on it because it just gives it an extra boost of flavor sometimes. And they're really good. I don't know if you've ever tried these on pizza before, but it's something that we really like. set the oven at 450 and these cook for just about I don't know 10 or 15 minutes until they are to the desired um, doneness that we prefer and then we eat it and it is really good. a lot of times I end up adding a fresh basil leaf to each slice just to add that extra delicious flavor and enjoy I hope this video was helpful and gave a realistic view of what a whole food plant-based diet looks like throughout the week. And as always, thank you so much for watching.